Your forecast first, sponsored by Natex Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. All right, so we have a number of uh, severe thunderstorm warnings going through. This is Danville right now on our roofing dog, INET. Our Flying America weather camera showing the storms moving through there. We have a number of warnings for Vermilion County. We've got our warning that goes until 530. Then a whole swath of them for Clark, Coles, and Edgar counties. And then we also have that including in the Shelby County. And then now a new one for McCoupin County. These are all along the kind of midsection of the derecho that's been moving through central Illinois and northern Illinois over the past few hours. Wind gusts with these storms up to 70 miles per hour. We have team coverage of these storms and we'll talk about all the latest with the damage as well as what you can expect for the rest of the evening coming up. WCI 3 News starts right now. Now from WCIA 3 News. The future of college football is in jeopardy. What we know about the fate of this season. Plus, the Champaign School Board has some tough decisions to make. The updates they're expected to give at tonight's meeting. We're asking people that have that have no symptoms and no uh, uh, high-risk exposures to hold off on seeking testing now. And a hospital is asking some people not to come in for COVID testing. Why they want those who don't have an urgent need to wait. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 5. We're tracking severe weather tonight. A line of storms has made its way to us after passing through the northern part of the state earlier today. This is video you're looking at from Galesburg, where a power line caught fire after high wind gusts got there. Good evening. I'm Jennifer Roscoe. Chief Meteorologist Kevin Lighty is live in Urbana right now. Kevin, I know we were hearing about gusts out in Iowa of 100 miles an hour. Okay, what are you looking at right now? I'm looking um, right now at a tree that is on top of a home here in southeast um, Urbana. You can see uh, large branches that landed on the roof of this home in southeast Urbana that actually came from the tree that you see up here. You can see where uh, they were snapped off and then just all kinds of branches all around. That's a very large tree. But also you may notice um, there's also a power line that uh, that tree took out. And as we uh, come back around, and you're going to see just, you know, around the neighborhood here, just tons and tons of tree branches that uh, are down across the area. I saw just an incredible amount of of trash cans and whatnot blowing everywhere. Now, what has happened is, is the power line that goes to this house that you see here is down on top of the house. And uh, the uh, fire department was just out here. And you can see there's that line. And I was just told that that line is hot. Okay, so that line is currently active, and uh, so they have it blocked off here. And this is just one of many reports that we're getting in of damage from across the area as far as uh, trees go and power lines as well. So, again, we're going to continue to track all this for you, but some very strong winds in Urbana, and it all came as uh, that tree branch came down, taking out the trees and the power lines there. We'll keep you up to date as we go throughout this evening. All right, Kevin, thank you so much. <clears throat> Other news now, right now, college football season is still set to kick off in September. But after the Power Five commissioners held an emergency meeting last night, there are doubts. Our sports reporter, Marley Weirda, is here now. So, okay, everybody is waiting for this decision. What have we heard so far today? Well, Jennifer, what we do know right now is that the future of college football is teetering on a very fine line. The season has not been officially canceled, but several reports are pointing in that direction. This morning, the Dan Patrick Show first reported that the Big Ten voted 12 to 2 in favor of canceling the season. But later on this afternoon, several other sources said no vote has been made and that they're actually voting right now as we speak. Either way, Illinois players have caught wave of the growing uncertainty and have united together under the We Want to Play movement. Illinois wide receiver Joshi Mator Bebe, who is in favor of playing this season, says regardless of whatever protocols are put in place, we need to accept what we can't control and focus on managing the things we can. Hashtag We Want to Play. Several others have also spoken out. Of course, we're just waiting right now for an official announcement from the Big Ten. So whether that comes tonight or later this week, we still don't have any official answers yet. Jennifer. Okay, Marley, thank you. We are two weeks out from the start of Champaign school year, and the board still needs to approve its reopening plans. W Signal 3's Jen Lask is live from our newsroom. Jen, so what is happening at tonight's board meeting? 
Well, Jennifer, we have a long night ahead. The board, first and foremost, is set to vote on a resolution approving Superintendent Susan Zola's reopening plans. She announced last week that the district would now plan to start fully remote for the first quarter and reevaluate if it can move to a hybrid plan for the second quarter by the end of September. The district is also expected to provide an update on the school resource officer program at tonight's meeting, which is a partnership between the school district and city of Champaign. The city citizen review board is calling for a specific study going forward. One thing that we did not look in um, that the city has not yet looked into is the way that school resource officers um, may impact uh, students of color differently than uh, their Caucasian counterparts. So looking into that, how they might um, be exacerbating uh, trauma and um, and starting uh, quite early teaching students to fear the police. The district releases survey results and data on the program every three years. The last time the study was conducted, the 2016-2017 school year, the majority of arrests made involved African-American students. Principals all say that they believed the SRO, they believe the SROs helped their schools, but also want to focus on building positive relations. So be sure to follow WCIA3 on Twitter later. I'm going to be providing updates on the different decisions happening at tonight's meeting and updates on the programs. Live in the newsroom, Jen Lask, WCIA 3, your local news leader. And of course, you'll bring that to us on our newscast at 9 and 10 as well. Yes. The COVID-19 pandemic is changing school as we know it. While some districts chose to move school online, others in the area are giving families a choice to attend in person. But even if students head to their buildings, things won't look the same. Some districts are disabling water fountains. Others are marking playgrounds off limits, all in an effort to curb the spread of the virus. The state has given all schools some leeway in how they prepare for the upcoming year. You can read highlights from the area district plans on our website at WCIA.com. And taking a look at today's numbers now, there are more than 1,300 new cases today. That brings the total up to more than 195,000 in the state. The recovery rate is holding steady at 95%. One more person has died, a woman in Cumberland County in her 90s. There are now more than 7,600 COVID-related deaths. One person is dead after a motorcycle crash in Macon County. It happened on West Elwyn Road, not far from Route 51. The coroner says 67-year-old Richard Weller of Decatur apparently left the road. He was ejected from the motorcycle and was pronounced dead at the scene. We're tracking severe weather tonight. We're gonna check back in with Jack and Kevin, but first this. There's a shortage of, of uh, materials, machines, and labor to get the testing done. More and more people are getting tested for COVID-19. So what will that mean for getting results back?